Okay. I think we got a live notification here, although it's telling me my stream status is bad, but I'm I'm pushing 4,000 kilobits a second, no problem here with no drop frames. So I don't know why YouTube's saying that. Also, using the NVIDIA encoder like puts the CPU just it just lets it chill. Like it's at two percent utilization right now, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, how's it going, folks? Uh, I see, obviously I don't sound too bad. You guys aren't yelling at me that my mic's too loud or too low. Looks like I'm barely touching the yellow here, so I don't expect I'll be too loud for you guys. But if I'm too low, try to turn me up a little bit. If you're maxed out and you still can't hear me, let me know and I can adjust it on the uh, sound control over here. So, all right, sorry about the delay. Uh, the first issue we had was something that actually tied over uh, into last week's live stream. So I was having issues connecting... Uh, Getting getting a, a, a LAN connection right to work, uh, downloads are fine. Like I, I have a 550 download upload uh, plan, whatever you want to call it, my ISP here, and the downloads are fine. I think wired, I'm getting like 350, 400, whatever. I'm not going to complain. But my uploads are absolutely terrible. Uh, the uploads, I believe, are like 0.5 megabits per second, which is not what it's. It's like a one percent of what it theoretically should be. Uh, so I, I've tried reinstalling LAN drivers. I tried installing the killer LAN driver, which is the one I should be using for this board. And I got an error saying that I didn't have permissions or something, which is BS. I have permissions. I'm the administrator on this account. So I don't know why that error came up. I'll have to Google it after the fact. Uh, but right now I'm just using Wi-Fi. That's the only, for some reason, my Wi-Fi driver works, works fine, but I can't use a wired connection. So anyway, if you guys have a solution to that problem, let me know. Uh, I'll be hunting on forums. Forums are actually really helpful. Maybe not Reddit so much as like the forums dedicated to troubleshooting PC hardware. Um, I tend to find my my answers either on there or via Twitter. I'll ask some people who've had similar issues. Anyway, Lone Star asks the first question here. We'll answer. I want to run my three front front case fans using a Molex connector and my three exhaust fans to my fan headers. Are there, are there any pros or cons of doing this? Thank you. Okay, so if you're talking about wiring a fan directly into a Molex connector, or all three of these fans into a Molex connector that's tied not to a fan hub, but directly to your PSU, then your PSU is going to output a constant power, constant voltage to all those fans. Uh, and what that means is you're not going to be able to control the RPMs of those fans. So it might be a higher RPM than you're comfortable with, assuming those fans are rated at maybe 1,200 to 1,400 RPM. Might be too loud for you. You might decide that... Uh, that's not going to cut it. Maybe get a controller, uh, a fan hub, I guess you could call it, to handle those RPMs discreetly, uh, and then you won't have to worry about that constant fixed voltage when you're wiring your fans directly into your power supply. Uh, USB Ethernet adapter? Ew. No, I don't have one of those on hand. I don't know why I would want to use... Well, that would fix the issue, I'm sure, because it's not passing through that LAN, that specific LAN port on the motherboard, but I want to use that LAN port. Like, it's a, it's a good one. Um, I just need to figure out if it's like a software issue or if maybe the, maybe the switch that I'm running all this stuff through isn't good enough. Uh, Bazinga X, thank you for that $10 super chat. My dude, treats and toys for Pepsi. Okay, I'll, I'll, all right, fine. Hey, Pepsi, Pepsi. Hey, babe, is Pepsi out there? I see a shadow, but I don't know if it's Lisa or, or the cat. I'll go see if I can find her. Be right back. Hold that thought. Pepsi. Hey, babe. told me he told me I had to bring you yes I know oh she is not having it right now hey hey I gotta go find you a toy for ten dollars at PetSmart or something at Walmart maybe Walmart might have it cheaper <laughs> I'm totally selling out Pepsi and she's not having it at all anyway hopefully she doesn't chew through any cables if the live stream cuts out uh, just randomly you'll know why she's already messing with stuff behind the monitor anyway Thanks for the super chat. And let's move on to some tech questions. Uh, let's see here. What's up, Matt C? How's it going? Favorite case for extended ATX? 
Yeah, I'm not really an extended ATX fan, to be honest. Um, I just I don't have any use case scenario for that kind of stuff. I'm gonna pull her out from here because she's she's going crazy behind it. Nope. Uh-uh. What? Oh, jeez. Sorry for the awkward angle. Get over here. Yeah, this is why I usually keep her out. Uh, extended ATX is just what I would look for is like a mid tower or full tower that's not too big. Uh, that would still support extended motherboards because the motherboard tray is flat, right? It's uniform with the uh, rest of the chassis. So you, it, unlike a fractal case, let's say, that has that indention there for cable management on the motherboard tray, uh, I would look for a case that had a, just a flat panel. Uh, that way, if I wanted e EATX, I could do that. I would have flexibility, uh, but I'm not compromising on like the aesthetics of the case because I don't like really big cases. Uh, I just don't have the hardware to deck them out, and I, I don't have a, a use case, like I said, for them. Okay, scrolling down here, uh, Cody Salak, what's going on? He is actually a sponsor. He's been a two-month sponsor so far of the channel. I like I like seeing those two uh, two battery bars there. You're going to have a full bar soon, Cody. I appreciate your support. What soundboard do you have, and how do you have it set up with your computer? Okay, so I have a video on this, Cody. Uh, if you want to look at that, I'll go in a little more detail in the video. But uh, keep it short and sweet, Yamaha MG. It's a Yamaha MG 10XU, which means that it has USB... Um, higher bitrate support, right, with USB. I think it's 10 bit. And then if you, no, 100, not 10, but 192 kilobits. So it's a, it's a higher uh, quality, I guess you could say, audio interface. Uh, and it's got six channels, it looks like. Yep, and I have two mics plugged in right now. So these run from uh, just the regular old LNR ports uh, straight into a three and a half millimeter jack on, uh, yeah, and the three mil jack is plugged into the motherboard. I mean, it's a really simple setup. I'm using a B2 Pro right now, and I have a B1 over there. And then when I'm doing camera shots, like the videos you guys see usually when I film on the, the Sony or, or the G85, then I use a, uh, it's an Audio-Technica AT2035. So yeah, she just scared herself and ran off anyway. Uh, and I'm not the most audio savvy guy, honestly. I haven't done enough research to give you guys like all the inside scoops as to what you want to look for and what you don't. I just know that these sound good. Uh, and the, the Behringer B2s and B1s sound really good, I think, for the money. Um, and that is something that uh, we talked about this with Brian a couple weeks ago. He's a big Behringer fan as well for the price. The end says, stop abusing that animal. Holding her is not abusing her. I don't know. It's just, it's just a cat. She's trying to jump out. That's not abuse. Uh, okay, let's see here. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit because I missed some questions. Let's see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Pepsi needs an RGB collar. <laughs> that would be dope. I <laughs> Y'all are good. Uh, what motherboard do you have in your personal rig? The one I edit with is, oh geez, you guys are gonna make me get up from my chair multiple times tonight, are you? I don't remember. Give me one second. Ah, that's right. Asus Maximus 10 Hero. That is the one I use. I like Asus boards for their reliability. I think they look uh, really good. Some of the best looking boards I think right now. I love Asus's aesthetic, and uh, you know you're gonna pay a little more for them usually, but you're paying for quality, um, and I can attest to that firsthand. I used Asus boards back when I first started building PCs. Um, just because I knew the name and the reviews look great and uh, now I'm one of those reviewers So yeah, Maximus 10 hero that is for an 8700k Z370 chipset Okay, Apex's Beast asks what is a good GP CPU combo from four to five hundred dollars for AM4? Uh, four to five hundred bucks is really tough, dude. You're gonna have to go used market unless you want to get really down and dirty with some just weaker graphics cards four to five hundred bucks let's say 500 bucks make it easier on me i would throw a ryzen 3 1200 in there a 2200 um and then maybe whatever you can fit graphics card wise but you know excluding your power supply case and motherboard and ram ram's going to be the real kicker in that budget because you're going to want at least eight gigs but that's <laughs> that's a fourth of your budget right there just in RAM, so good luck. Um, I recommend used. When you're going to stay in that price range, it's really tough, unless you want to just go completely with an APU setup, get a 2200G and call it the day. Um, okay. 
Game Dev 1909 Asus is okay, but I had to replace too many dead BIOS chips the last few years. I haven't heard too many first-hand accounts of that issue. I think that's pretty isolated. Most of the reviews I see, like I say, unless you're doing some really weird tinkering with your BIOS, if you're updating your BIOS a lot, which isn't recommended unless you really need some new supported feature that most of the time these BIOS updates stop after a good solid year or two, um, then I would say you'd be just fine. Let's see, scrolling down here. What is your favorite song at the moment? That is 741 More Gaming. And uh, my favorite song, that's a tough one. I'm going to say it's probably from, I'm really into Bring Me the Horizon, Breaking Benjamin, that kind of stuff. It's going to be between one of those two bands. I really like Follow You from Bring Me the Horizon because it sounds so different than what I'm used to from them. They used to be really heavy rock and now they're kind of more chilled out, but I think they have a really good like melodic tune now. So probably like Follow You or, or Oh No. Uh, I like Doomed as well. I, I, let's go with Doomed. I think Doomed is like just super dynamic and it, it sounds really good, especially on like a surround sound setup. Set up. So yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. Stephen Curry, $2 Super Chat. Thank you, my dude. What do you think of LeBron going to the Lakers? Um, I haven't actually followed that. Once the playoffs stopped, I and I don't really follow transfer news or any of that because it's usually all just kind of hearsay until somebody actually announces something. But LeBron going to the Lakers would just be, I don't know. I, I don't, like he's kind of filling the void for Kobe's absence, right? Um, I don't know if the Lakers really need LeBron. I guess... <laughs> it depends on how well they all work together. Like, like when I watch LeBron play, like it's only LeBron, right? Like he had support, I think the last couple of years, but this, this time around, I, it was just, it was just all him. And if, if he wants it to stay that way, I don't think he'll transfer. But if he, I, I think if he wants to just start fresh and start working with people, um, who, who are like-minded, right. Who kind of think like he does when it comes to just dishing the ball around, um, then he'll, he might consider it. I don't know. It's all about money, honestly. Like, if the money's right, he'll go. <laughs> he doesn't really care where he goes as long as he gets to play and as long as he gets to make lots of money, I imagine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Cyber Shark, let's be real. Greg's favorite song is Despacito, version 69. Michael Johan, if I'm streaming, which CPU do I use? 6700K or Ryzen 5 1600? Uh, you're going to have higher IPC with the 6700K. Um, you're going to have the same number of cores. Oh, no, excuse me. No, you're, you're going to have more cores with Ryzen 5 1600. I'm sorry. I was thinking 8700K. Uh, I would go, I mean, I would probably pick Ryzen 5 1600 over the 6700K just because you are going to have more of those cores at your disposal. They won't be clocked as high. But again, this is more about CPU, individual core utilization here. So if you designate two cores, let's say, to render, right, or to, to stream with, and then two other cores to game with, I mean, that's all you got. That's, that's... That's tough, even with a high frequency. Let's assume you can get your 6700K to 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz, which is tough on Skylake. Um, the Ryzen 5, to me, despite the frequency drop going from 4.6 to maybe 4 on a 1600 with a decent uh, B350 or X370 board, I think you're going to have just more breathing room uh, because you're going to have 6 cores and 12 threads instead of 4 cores and 8 threads. Um, not fanboying behind AMD. I just think that the extra cores really are going to matter when you're streaming. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Black Ops, I saw your super chat. I'm getting to it. I'm scrolling I'm scrolling down here. Give me one uno segundo. All right. I have an AMD FX 6300 with a GT730. What would you recommend for an upgrade? I have a 300-watt PSU with a good aftermarket cooler. Dude, that's tough, man. Your 300-watt power supply is going to be a limiter for sure if you upgrade to if you upgrade both your CPU and your graphics card, 300 is not going to cut it. If it does, you're going to be on the very upper end of your spectrum. Uh, so you're going to need to update a lot. Um, depends on how much money you have. It's kind of a vague question. you got to tell me how much money you have to spend, what your preferences are, what you do with your PC. I don't know enough about it that you send in your Super Chat to answer the question fully. But if I were you, I would upgrade everything if I could. I would completely upgrade that platform. The FX platform is, is as dead as anything right now. I just It's really tough to recommend a CPU that you can buy on eBay for 10 or 20 bucks just because nobody wants them anymore uh, because Ryzen is such a good value. It's just in completely eliminated bulldozer and pile driver architecture, which is really good. Um, but at the same time, a GT730 is 
a GT 730. Like you could buy a 2200G and be better off than that. So I don't know. Uh, but I, I would say everything. If you can upgrade everything, that's a tough one to, to just start from. Like that's your frame and your frame's pretty weak. I'm gonna say it bluntly. Um, you might wanna just rebuild completely. Let's see, scrolling up here. I see Cybershark said Kappa. I see that, that 40 whatever, whatever dollars sign that is. <laughs> what computer do you have at your desk? I have two PCs at my desk. I have the 2700X and I have the 8700K, both with 16 gigs of RAM. No, excuse me. Yeah, both with 16 gigs of RAM, both with a 1070 Ti, both with uh, 850 or 1000 watt power supply, which is way overkill, but it just keeps the power supply super quiet. Um, and one case is an S340 Elite. One case is a Fractal Design Define C Tempered Glass. Scrolling down here. All right. Peppers asks, what car do I have? I have an Infinity Q60 Red Sport. Uh, Luke, I see you. Important question. What, what is the condition of your i3-7050K? Does it still work? And do you still use it as a box opener? I don't know where I put that thing. You know, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Uh, I don't know where it is <laughs> because I don't care about it that much. I mean, like, it was a decent box opener because the edges of CPUs are pretty sharp. Um, and when you have like an LGA socket, right? When you don't have pins literally on the CPU, it actually makes for a really great cutting surface, assuming you don't want to use a CPU anymore. But I imagine it still works. Like unless you actually like deface the bottom of the CPU, uh, you know, little connection points, I think you'll be okay. Uh, still using the CPU. So I imagine it still works. I just don't know where it is. And I don't really care to know where it is because I'll never use it in real life. Uh, let's see. Fricky Nicky D. I guess that's how you say your name. Thank you for the $2 super chat. Best gaming chair in your opinion. IMO. Uh, I've been using Vertigear for a long time. I don't think they're the best gaming chair out there, but I think that uh, for what I prefer like this chair here i think this is the sl2000 it's super comfortable it fits my profile perfectly it's a pretty narrow chair so it wraps around it's not like an uncomfortable boxy just annoying like racing style chair i think there's actually like quality in these the only thing i don't like about the chair is the armrest the armrest is just a piece of like rubberized plastic i don't know how to describe it but it just feels cheap and most gaming chairs are going to have like that cheap feeling armrest um the ones that have like the you know the faux leather coating on those are the ones to go after um but i mean there are plenty of like noble chairs i know noble makes really good chairs um main gear and a few others that uh main gear did i say that right I mean, there's so many out there uh jeez dx racer like i can just think of some off the top of my head that i know a lot of people use but you just got to pick the one that looks the best on screen. Frankly, the one that gets the best reviews that you've seen the tech tubers you follow, and just pick one. Um, let's see. I'm scrolling down. Greg, is it worth going X99 from X79 if found cheap enough? Matt, I would only say it'd be worth it if you can get decent money for your X79 rig. You can usually part with like your motherboard for two, three hundred bucks. Those things are still really expensive. So if you can get a decent amount of money back for your platform, upgrading shouldn't be an issue. And I would condone that if you think that it's a, uh, if you think it's viable. King Ammo, what's your favorite YouTuber? I really like Doug Demiro. Doug, uh, Doug really just solidified himself as a prominent car reviewer on YouTube and his personality is what did it like it was him it wasn't like the cars he reviewed it wasn't you know like the, the equipment that he used it was only his personality like the quirkiness the awkwardness that is Doug I would love to meet the guy in real life someday that personality is what made his channel what it is it's all him he did that a hundred percent uh, and I mean kudos to him for it like he he found his niche and he found what he was good at what people liked and he just rolled with it um, so good on him for that I, I really like watching his stuff he's got really good stuff out there and his Bugatti Chiron review recently like pff, dude that was like the pinnacle right there and when he also started doing things with uh, Jay Leno that was cool that was a cool bit as well Bazinga X think for that five dollar super chat why were you excited when you shot your wife in the head during the game you two played, did you pay for it afterwards? Let me tell you. Um, yeah, if you, if you don't know what he's talking about, we I, I 1v1'd my wife in CSGO, and we had a lot of fun. 
um, but <laughs> she destroyed me. And she was playing on, I mean, she was playing on a big screen, right, with, like, peripherals she'd never used before. She didn't like the mouse pad. Um, so, I mean, I know how picky, like, professional players are. She had played pro before, um, and she still managed to destroy me. Granted, it's CSGO. I don't play CSGO, so I'm going to use that as my excuse. Uh, but no, I didn't really pay for it afterwards. I think she was okay with just destroying me in the game and leaving it at that. Uh, but that one time I overkilled her, that was that was really fun. It was worth it. GTT Wincam, N-O-K. What is that, like North Korean currency? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, whatever 20 is, appreciate that. Do you like X58, running X65? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, I actually have looked at these in the past, uh, way back. Like a couple years ago, I was looking at these heavy because I wanted to do a budget build that used the uh, 5675 or a derivative of that. Um, I wanted to do the LG, LGA 775 mod. I wanted to do a lot of stuff like that, and I haven't yet. I just never jumped on the hardware. Like, I'm always a little skeptical about buying stuff from eBay sellers. Um, I try to stick with just Amazon Newegg unless I'm purposely going used. And then I look to Craigslist first because then I can, like, at least kind of feel out the seller, maybe do a bit of due diligence and test components. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm never actually, um, I've never actually built a system like that but there's a reason why they're popular they're popular from a budget standpoint for sure so maybe in the near future okay scrolling down here okay beastmaster 101 i got the ryzen 1600 to 3.8 gigahertz on 1.26 volts it's good voltage on the stock cooler is that like a good chip that i have or does everyone get 3.8 at 1.26 that's um 3.8 is is not difficult to hit, like at all. Um, I would say 3.9 and 4 is where it starts getting real. I mean, these are exponential, right? The amount of voltage required to hit frequency past a certain point becomes exponentially larger. Uh, and as a result, right, you have to deal with a lot more thermal input or output, excuse me, from the, uh, from the electric energy input, right? So uh, I would say... You probably got a you, you got a good one. That's better than the, than my sixteen hundred. I'll tell you that. I don't know how much better it is. I haven't actually done like a survey to see what the average voltage is, but I would be totally fine trading with you because you have a better one than I do. I'll leave it at that. Uh, okay, yeah. Huru hu hu hung hu u hung vu. I totally butchered that. He said hi, Greg. So I'm going to say hi back. Levin Castillo. Hold on one second here. $2 super chat. How much should I sell my 1063 gig card for? A lot of people are trying to sell those on eBay for like 250 300 Like I would ask, I don't know. If you want to start that high, that's fine. Go on eBay. Go on Craigslist. See what other people are asking. Price yours similarly. And then if you want to undercut them, lower the price just a little bit. I don't know your market, but if I was just wanting a quick sale on a 1063 gig, I would sell it for like 220 or put it up there for 220 and then maybe take as low as 180 um, That's because I know that you probably did pay much more for that unless you bought it during the mining craze. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see. Nicholas Sanai said, uh, I think I said that right, was looking to get the mic you have but can't really afford the expensive interface. Do you think that a cheaper one will have many sacrifices with audio? Okay, so I know firsthand what this is like, right, having a mixer like I have here or using just a simple phantom power box, right, that's XLR to XLR, male, female, that plugs into a wall. There's no controls on it. It's all software. It's all, like, stuff you control on your PC, right? Um, that is going to be perfectly fine, I would say. I Look, when you guys, if you want to watch uh, any of my last three or four videos, those were all filmed with a pile phantom power box, right? 48 volt, is that what phantom is? I think it's 48 volt. Uh, and all that does is connect to the wall, right? Just a simple outlet gives that thing power. I just went out of focus. That was weird. Gives it power. Uh, and then I have an XLR that converts directly to a three and a half mil jack that plugs into my camera on one end. So that's the input XLR. And then the output XLR, uh, runs into, oh no, sorry. The output XLR runs into the camera via the three and a half millimeter jack. The input runs from my mic. So XLR to XLR on the input, XLR to three and a half millimeter on the output, uh, which you get rid of the ground there when you do that, but the audio is still fine. I mean, you can watch the video. It's pretty much unedited. Like it's it's actually clean audio already straight up. So there's not much 
you know, that I have to do to it compression wise, editing wise and audacity, what have you. Um, so it actually sounds pretty good. I would say that's perfectly fine. You don't need a mixer. What is the best case under 70 bucks? I, uh, Jimmy 142 Schmidt. I have a few videos talking about really dirt cheap cases. Um, the Fantex P300 is really cheap. Check that one out. Uh, Deep cool has a case coming out that was like 40 something dollars uh, that we uh, showcased at Computex. That was a really good value. <laughs> trying to think. The, the, even like the Fantex P350, I want to say, which I'm going to review and do a build in very soon, that case is around your price range. So consider that one as well. Um, yeah, there are plenty. On, I mean, all you got to do is just go on Amazon and set your. Uh, your parameters right to a max of 70 bucks and just keep scrolling till you find something interesting and then when you find something interesting youtube it you know, watch reviewers review it and then make up your mind that way I mean, that's still what i do like i watch other reviewers review products that i'm looking to buy myself right for personal use so it's kind of funny but yeah i, I mean I, I still like i'll go to jay or i'll go to kyle or i'll go to dimitri or, or linus or any of them to, to watch a review, especially on like laptops and stuff, because I don't get laptop samples usually. So if I want to buy a laptop and I'm looking at, you know, like what are the features? What does the screen look like? How do they feel about the, the keyboard? Stuff that you can't just look at on a picture and, and discern, you know, how's the coil wine, all that good stuff. How hot does it run? You can find all those in reviews. And that's why channels like these are pretty important, right? For people trying to make decisions, purchasing decisions, especially expensive purchases. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's really all I have to say about that. Um, but I would say just use Amazon Newegg and then check your reviews. Silver, $1.99 super chat. You shorted me one penny. I'm going to be a little bitter about it. No, I'm just kidding. Salazar, you said my name. Congratulations. Anyway, thank you for the super chat. Uh, I see somebody here. Matthew Johnson. Is that a pickle? Looks like a pickle to me. And a skull. And a Solica? I totally butchered that. I'm so sorry. I think that's two words and I'm messing it up. Anyway, could you please recommend a motherboard for an i5-8400 associated with a GTX 1070X and a cooler? The main purpose is gaming in full HD. B, I mean, B360, I look at MSI for cheap B360 boards. I've reviewed, I'm pretty sure I've already reviewed one. If I haven't, um, look for, just type in MSI B360. I usually look to MSI for the cheaper stuff. If you want the just the more durable, I think better looking usually stuff, I go with ASUS. Gigabyte's kind of a fair middle ground, um, but I would go with MSI B360. As long as you can get around some of the BIOS issues people have, you should be fine there. A cooler, Hyper 212 is a pretty staple cooler. Um, you can go with a Gamax GT from Deepcool, a Cryorig H7. Cryorig's good stuff as well. You get into more expensive stuff usually when you go to like Be Quiet or Noctua. Okay, stable entropy. I have what he is talking about, and it messed up once in a while, but it does sound really nice. People say, I would recommend a dynamic microphone if your house is noisy or you like loud keyboards. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, dynamic mics will, will do you a solid, definitely. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I've, I haven't had any issues at all with my with my pile of phantom power box. Like, it, no issues. Um, yeah, and it's, it's scary because if something does happen while I'm filming, I'm not going to know it and that whole clip is gonna be shot. So it it's kind of a risk, but I haven't had any issues so far with mine. Okay, uh, let's see here. Should I get a 1080 Ti with my AMD CPU? King Kong named John. I would only buy a 1080 Ti if you could get one for around 600 bucks. I wouldn't pay a dime over 600 or 650, straight up. I just Unless you really need a 1080 Ti, they're not worth what they're selling for right now. They're not worth $800, they're not worth even $700, I would argue, unless you're getting a really beefy cooler from a reputable brand and you're just like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Or unless you're buying one with a pre-installed water block, let's say. Uh, but 1080 Ti is, in my opinion, the sweet spot right now for those cards should be around 600 bucks or so. And we're not seeing that still. Uh, so I would wait a little longer. Just get a 1070 for now. Usually that'll tie you over in 1080p and 1440p gaming. Okay, scrolling up here. I missed a couple. Okay. Uh, scrolling up, scrolling up. Okay, you guys are answering each other's questions. That's actually really cool. Thank you. <laughs> Take some of the load off. Okay, here. Which is better for an FX6300 and an MSI 760? Is that a motherboard? 
a GeForce 560 Ti or a Power Color Radeon HD 7850. Oh, whew, that's a tough one. Oof. I gotta go back and look at those benchmarks because I actually don't think I remember. Um, that's gonna be something you have to do your reviews on. I, mean, I would just pick the one that has a higher frame rate. That's what I would do. Um, just go with the one that gives you the higher frame rate. That's all I can tell. I haven't tested either of those cards personally, and the accounts that I do have on hand, um, I don't have it. Like, well, I don't have them on hand. I don't have them right in front of me. So your guess is as good as mine. I would do the research and find it out. I'm sorry I don't have more of an answer for you. The older stuff I'm just not as keen on. Okay, all right, if you guys would stop putting the red circles around the text to get my attention, I'm purposely avoiding those, just so you guys know. So if you put a red circle around it, I'm not gonna read it, because it's not fair, because then everyone's gonna spam red circles, and then I'm just not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to read anything, there's red circles everywhere. Okay, uh, going back to the text stuff. Uh, hi Greg, is it worth it to buy a 7700K second hand just to enable Intel Optane on a Z270 board, or invest in an M.2 or SSD storage? I have a 6700K on my Z270. Yeah, stick with a 6700K. I, I don't think there's a reason at all. I don't think Optane is a reason alone to upgrade. Optane's good on like a budget basis if you really want to like bump up your hard drive speeds. Optane is like a, a super fast cache in, in essence. Um, but if you already have a 6700K and a Z270 board, then you probably already have the funds for an SSD or an M.2 SSD. So, uh, I would just stick with that. There's no sense to, in my opinion, upgrading the CPU alone. That that just doesn't add up. Okay, uh, somebody asked, I saw a question here. Okay, Jay the Fox, can you do a guide on overclock on a Gigabyte motherboard? Okay, so the reason why you can't do like, Gigabyte and ASUS and MSI, they all have different boards. They all have, obviously they're different boards, but they all have different BIOSes. All their, their UIs look very different. Um, but the general stuff is the same. I already have an overclocking guide I uploaded like two years ago. It's the same procedure. It's all pretty much worded the same. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not something I think I need to make a review for every manufacturer because it's all worded basically the same. And if you're concerned about what a word actually means, you can Google it. Usually a form will tell you. Someone else will have a question that you have and it'll usually be answered right underneath it what it actually means. Like instead of calling it vCore, they might call it CPU voltage, right? But you know vCore is that. Um, well, sometimes it's worded a little differently. There are different types of CPU voltage. There's like input voltage, there's vCore, and there's CPU voltage. Like there's a def there are several different terms that don't always mean the same thing. So you gotta be careful. Um, but if you're concerned about that, check the motherboard manual if you wanna be cool, I guess, or just Google what it actually means and type in the manufacturer, you'll have your answer there. Is AMD Vega GPU cards good? Yeah, only if you can get them for the good prices, Dalton. I would say for a Vega 56, around 400 bucks, no more than 400. For Vega 64, no more than maybe 500. I, I wouldn't pay more than probably 500 bucks for Vega 64, honestly. But that's in a that's in a better market than what we have now. So right now they're to me they're just not very feasible. Okay, let's see. Scroll. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Okay, so would the Phantom Power Box be better than a thirty dollar mixer, Nicholas? Uh, the mixers have Phantom Power built in, so it's all this. I mean, it's all going to be the same. As long as it says Phantom Power, it's going to be Phantom Power. Um, but if you want to spend 30 bucks on a mixer, then just do that. As long as the reviews are fine, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Uh, but if you want the versatility, a mixer is going to be better for you. When do you think NVIDIA will release a new mid-range GPU? I don't expect it to be this year, honestly. Now that we've seen what NVIDIA is hoping to get to, right, with the next-gen architecture, I don't think it's going to be this year. I really don't. Um, that, that is, I mean, and especially right now with, with how graphics cards are, I don't think they need to make any. I mean, if I was if I was them right now, I would be perfectly fine with the demand that I already have on the current supply. So if I am in a current R and D phase, which we know they are, um, then I have no. I don't see any reason to rush the launch. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure they're just taking it slow, uh, making sure everything's refined, and uh, I, I think AMD is doing the same thing. So I think given the current market situations, they don't feel the need to. I think that's a part of it. At least that's how I would see it. 
Uh, never tried Vegas 64. How good is it compared to Titan XP? Uh, Titan XP, if I recall, that's Titan XP is going to be better than Vegas 64. Vegas 64, think of Vegas 64 like a 1080. Uh, it's very comparable in gaming situations to a 1080, although its compute power, its raw compute power is much higher uh, because it does have so many stream processors at its disposal. So it, the use case varies actually a, a bit more for Vegas 64. Uh, but in a general sense, in, in most games, the 1080 Ti, uh, or a 1080 Ti in general, or a Titan XP will be a, a superior graphics card. Okay, what would be a good CPU-GPU combo for Canadians? I don't know your Canadian currency. I don't follow Canadian markets at all. I don't follow market trends for Canadians. I don't follow their prices. Um, but I've always said the best value bang for the buck system you can build is going to be a Ryzen 5. Uh, and like a 1070 is pretty good or a 1060 or an RX 580 like that kind of like mid-range area is usually where you get the most bang for your buck um, because of the jump from a 1060 to a 1070 is huge right it's a huge jump between those two cards in most games but the, the, the price jump is not as high 300 bucks to 400 bucks it's not a huge jump that's in a better market than we have now but back when these cards were cheaper right below MSRP like they should have been like they should be now, uh, that was, a, a, in my opinion, a reasonable price jump for the extra performance you were getting in the 1070. Okay, yeah, what do we have? What do you think of Threadripper 2? Uh, I think it's very niche case. I mean, like a lot of people want Threadripper and Threadripper 2 and Intel Extreme CPUs because they want the extra cores because they want to be able to do multiple things at the same time. But honestly, to be able to utilize all of those cores to their full potential, it's going to take some serious, like, serious productivity work. Like, it's, it's, I don't use most of the time all six cores or all eight cores on this machine. Like, I'm streaming right now, I'm using the NVIDIA encoder. I, my CPU is idling at 2% right now. I literally see it in Streamlabs 2.8%, 2.2%, 1.8%. Like, it's literally just chilling. Like, it's the lowest temperature right now. Uh, and the system's super quiet because I'm using the NVIDIA encoder. So like, I don't even use the CPU when I'm streaming. Um, now when I'm gaming, I might. If I'm playing CSGO, I might not need to because CSGO is gonna leverage, I would say, the CPU probably more if you're gaming at a lower resolution, lower presets uh, than, the, than the GPU, right? Uh, so maybe I wanna keep the NVIDIA encoder on for that to offset the CPU leverage. But if I'm playing PUBG and I know the graphics card is gonna be utilized 90%, 100%, uh, then I might want to change back to the H.264 or X.264 encoder. So it really depends on the on the use case scenario. Um, let's see here. I have Megatech Deck Kid GG. Uh, I so I don't need to reinstall Windows when changing motherboards. Uh, usually no. If you're changing motherboards, you won't have to. You might have a few driver updates as you boot into Windows the first time after the swap. Um, but you might also have issues, like other driver conflicts. Like Windows is really finicky. Like it'll make you think that the, all your driver conflicts are, are eliminated. Even when you switch between Intel and AMD with the same SSD, which you can do, by the way. I've done that before. But you'll notice a huge performance degradation when it comes to games and coding, all of that, because you have driver conflicts, right? Because Windows 10 doesn't completely eliminate uh, a lot of those drivers that were specifically for Intel, right? Or specifically for AMD, whichever platform you're coming from. Uh, so it's not as simple as just plug and play. But if you're just switching a motherboard, I would say in most cases, yeah, you're, you're not going to need to, you know, do a fresh OS install. Uh, but run some benchmarks before and after just to see would be an interesting, uh, interesting experiment nonetheless. Uh, Jojen Kang says you under and uh, you underestimate the sheer number of 3D artists salivating for the release of Threadripper 2. Yeah, the sheer number of 3D artists, dude, is not high compared to number of gamers. Like, there's this doesn't even come close. They're so niche. Like, they're probably less than one percent. I'm sure they're salivating over it, and they should, right? Programmers, compilers, all those kinds of workloads are definitely going to utilize the cores, but most people don't do that. Like, I would say 95 at least percent of people. Don't do that kind of stuff. Don't do any kind of workload that would push 32, 28, whatever number of cores you'll have. Uh, okay, Alfex says, when are you going to do more science videos? Uh, whenever. I just need some topics. If you guys have suggestions, you can leave those in the comments. Uh, you can leave them in this chat. I'll check those out, take notes. And if you want to tweet at me, you can do that as well. You guys know my Twitter, I assume, at ScienceStudioYT. And there you go. Okay, what does the 980 Ti... Co 
compare to these days, 1070-ish maybe, vertical limit, I have a video literally comparing head-to-head -head the 1070 Ti, or excuse me, the 1070 and the 980 Ti. They're very, very close from a frame rate perspective. The only major difference I would say is the 980 Ti consumes slightly more power. Uh, so higher TDP on the 980 Ti side, it's maximal architecture, it's slightly less efficient anyway. Actually, it's, it's pretty significantly less efficient. When you compare it, like, pass, like Pascal is actually really efficient for what it is. The jump in performance compared to the jump in power consumption, which was actually a dip in power consumption, is really incredible. That was Pascal's big accomplishment, was how little power it actually needed to output, right? To, just for that, that raw GPU power, the T flop value, whatever you want to look at, frame rate value that, that you're getting from the graphics card itself based on the power input is incredible with Pascal. Okay, yeah, scrolling down. John Markefka says, thank you for your content. Thank you for watching, John, and thank you for checking out the live stream on this late Sunday night or early Monday morning, wherever you live on the planet. Might be late Monday morning, I don't know. Uh, okay, over a year ago, you made a video on the R9 Fury. In regards to 2018, what do you think now would be a good price for it? For an R9 Fury, oh gosh. Uh, I was comparing it in that video to a 1070 Ti. Or to a, I keep saying 1070 Ti. To a 1070. 1070 Ti wasn't released yet. It was a 1070, and I was saying, well, hey, look, 1070 is 400 bucks, 450 bucks, right when these were released. The R9 Fury, I believe, was like 250 US. For an R9 Fury now, power consumption aside, I would say it's it's worth about 200 bucks. I probably wouldn't pay any more than 200 dollars for an R9 Fury. Uh, but I mean, they're they're good cards. They just they run really hot, uh, and they. They're, they're pretty liberal on the power consumption. So, something else to consider there. Larry Froling, Froling, $2 super chat. Thank you. He says, great channel. I appreciate that. You guys are great fans and great viewers. If you don't want to call yourself a fan, at least you just view the channel. I appreciate it. Uh, do you think the Volta cards will have tensor cores to enable RTX in games? I don't know yet. I actually want to do a video on tensor cores. And so I'm going to save that for a separate video when I do more research to talk about them. But yes, I have, I have actually heard of that. Um, so we'll we'll wait <laughs> before I say something incorrect. We'll wait to uh, to do a full-on video on what a tensor core is and why it would be useful for Volta. Do you think RAM prices will go back down to average prices? When do you think? That's Elias's question. RAM prices are already starting to work their way down, at least in the States. 16 gigs now costs maybe 150, 160 for a, you know, a decent kit, not one that's like RGB and all that stuff that's crazy, but a 16 gig kit of like 3000 megahertz RAM, I can find you one right now for 160 US on either Newegg or Amazon. So the prices are coming down. They're no longer like 200 bucks and above, but when they finally regulate to where they should be, uh, that's gonna be a while. Um, and court cases, class action lawsuits, they all take a lot of time all these huge hefty fines that these companies are gonna have to pay i you know it's not something that just happens overnight so i would say at least six more months maybe a couple more years if we look at historical trends when this happened last time it took it took about a year for prices to fully regulate if i recall correctly because um, i do have a video on this so you might want to go back and look at the historical charts again to get better context because this is basically the same thing. It's just a little slightly different because the the big three, right? Samsung, Hynix, and Micron, like they're like 95, 96% of the memory chip market and our memory suppliers. And uh, they're being hit pretty hard right now. So it all just depends. If it's not going to be an overnight process, though, I will say that. I would say 2019 by the earliest is my opinion. Zach Moore Tav Zavi, thank you for the $2 super chat. Is YouTube your full time? What about your degree? Yeah, YouTube's my full time. I'm uh, still a student, so I'm, I'm working on my MBA and I'll graduate in October. I'll finish my classes in October. I'll officially graduate in December. Uh, so I gotta drive to Louisiana to do that again. Um, but I don't use, I don't use my engineering degree. Which, I mean, I kind of, I mean, I, there are a few things that kind of overlap with what I do now on YouTube, but most of it is, separate because it's a petroleum degree that's very it's not specific in the sense that, like i mean you have a petroleum degree you expect to work on a rig but the stuff we learn in class overlaps a lot with mechanical degrees i would feel comfortable applying for you know a, a, ba a basic or general mechanical engineering degree job 
uh, just because we take a lot of the same classes, a lot of the same statics, mechanics and materials, transport phenomena, thermodynamics, all that stuff we had to take. Um, so there's a lot of overlap there, uh, but I, I just, despite knowing that I could make a lot more money in the field, I like doing this a lot more. Um, and when I, when I have my MBA, I might not even need to use my engineering degree still. So <laughs> I don't know, uh, we'll see. Jonathan Wang asks, do you mind if I ask, but what race are you? Well, I'm clearly white, that is my race, uh, but my ethnicity, I'm Hispanic. So uh, dad's side of the family's Spain, Spanish heritage. So that's why my last name is what it is. I'm from Swedish, Siltmaka Alexandis. That's an interesting comment, Siltmaka. <laughs> Nicholas A. Chipitelli, Whew. is RAID 10 worth it? Uh, and if so, how do you set it up? I haven't done a video on setting up RAID yet. Um, I would say there's, I mean, there's a case for either RAID 1 or RAID 0, but RAID 10, it's very, I don't think it's necessary for most people. It's very niche, again. I don't think you should bother unless you have really important documents that you want to keep backed up all the time. Um, or if you want this really fast write speeds and like all this storage at your disposal and I don't know I, I just don't think it's for the average consumer it's not worth it Michael Allen do you think Bitcoin mining will actually be profitable with internet companies putting monetary data caps and services after they get rid of net neutrality I don't really know dude. I don't really talk about bitcoins very much I don't care about Bitcoin mining I don't do it I'll never do it I just think it's an unregulated cesspool so that's my comment on Bitcoin mining uh, what year is your infinity? Did you buy it new, Steven? Uh, it's a 2017. I bought it with like 10k miles on it. Uh, so it comes, it's still, it has like a powertrain warranty. It was an infinity certified car, so it's got the warranty and all that good stuff. Um, that's really about it. I'll save the rest of the stuff for the video that we eventually do on the car. Okay, uh, what's up, Tony? We've got the Reality PC Customs channel in here. I forgot I made you a moderator. I'm really glad I did that. And the answer to your question is, duh. I'm just kidding. I'm super lazy, dude. I mean, I showed you. I used to get used to get lit in the gym, uh, but I lost all that weight because I'm lazy when it comes to working out now. Uh, I would just rather be making videos. That's what makes me money. And now that I'm living on my own, I definitely feel the need to uh, prioritize work over bodybuilding. I don't know. Okay. Uh, i5-8400 is one of the best gaming CPUs. That's true. That actually is in my testing. Uh, when do you think augmented reality gaming will be mass marketed? I think that's got maybe five, ten years. We're still a good ways away because it's so expensive. Anything that's new like that is going to take time from a price standpoint before it ever penetrates the typical consumer market. So a good while. I would say a decade, roughly. Um... Hmm. Scrolling down, we have here we got the new stuff. Meet mics. Hey man, just built a new PC. My AIO tubes are touching the heat plate of the GPU. Is it safe? Thanks. Yeah, typically it's gonna be okay. Like I've had that happen. You know, it's something you can't really help when the tubes are long. They just kind of hang above that back plate, and the back plate's gonna get hot. Like the back plates of most graphics cards usually don't have any thermal properties, but they still get hot just because they're connected right via metal screws to the PCB, to the wh whatever it's connected to underneath that. Some thermal plates, um, some back plates do have thermal properties though. Like they'll have like thermal pads connecting the PCB to the back plate. Not that it helps very much as long as, you know, you gotta have fans really that get rid of the heat there. Uh, but the AIO tubes aren't gonna melt or anything like that. You'll be perfectly fine. Uh, okay, here, yeah, scrolling down. Uh, any tips for set for any tips into selling Kazi? You just had a question. I was like midway reading it and then you deleted it. <laughs> GG. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get my parts for my new PC today or tomorrow. Do I need 64 gigs of RAM for video editing and rendering, or is 32 gigs enough? Uh, Bane slays 32 gigs is plenty. Um, for almost any video editing I can think of. I use 16 gigs for most of my video editing work and you're not gonna tell a difference in 99% of the scenarios. Um, between eight gigs and 16 gigs, yeah, probably. 
uh, but 16 gigs is, is enough, I would say, for a lot of people. 32 gigs is just kind of like saying, okay, if I ever need the extra, I got it, even though you know in the back of your head you're not going to use usually that much of it. Okay, here we have uh, give me some good stuff. Give me some good stuff, folks. What happens if you never clean your PC build? King Ammo, you can just Google that. <laughs> I think you know the answer to that question. What do you personally think the max monitor size for 1080p is? Uh, it's a good question. I think probably 20, I think 24 inches is a good stopping point for 1080p. 27 inches, you're gonna start to see pixels uh, within about two feet of viewing distance. I can see pixels now on this display. And this is a 24 inch display, 1080p. It's a 240 hertz panel. Uh, that was the selling point of it from BenQ, but it's 24 inches, right? Which is pretty big uh, for a 1080p panel. And then for 1440p, carrying on with that question, I would say 27 inches. I think 32 inches is too big for any mother, for any monitor. I just don't like that size personally. Um, ultra wide though, like a 30, four inch ultra wide, that's a good size. Cause that's about 27 inch right height wise, but it's longer this way, longer um, horizontally. And I think that's a really cool combo, 3440 by 1440. Okay, here, uh, give me some good stuff, folks, good stuff. Are you taking your MacBook Pro in for keyboard issues? Yeah, I talked about this actually, good question, John. Uh, so I talked about this in the MacBook keyboard issue video where Apple officially announced that their keyboards are trash uh, and that they break or become defective very easily. Like the smallest speck of dust falls between the key and the key uh, surface underneath, it just, it won't register. It's not tactile and the operating system is going to detect the, uh, the actuation of the key. So. Yeah, probably. The only thing is though, I have to send the MacBook in for that and it's just gonna take a while to, to, to send it in and get it back and I don't know if I wanna say goodbye to my laptop for that long. Sorry, that was probably really loud. Uh, just because I do a lot of my schoolwork on the laptop. So I don't know if I wanna say goodbye to it for that long. Have you ever seen use the Dell S2716 DG monitor? Is it worth the price? I have not reviewed that. I haven't seen it in person so I can't tell you now, but I'll look into it. Uh, okay, we have a question from Carlos Bautista. Why does Walmart sell gaming PCs and can you make a video about Walmart gaming PCs? Uh, I wasn't a, if Walmart sells gaming PCs, they're probably not gonna be very expensive. I, my Walmart doesn't have gaming PCs. We have three Walmarts here, but the one that is closest to me doesn't have gaming PCs, I don't think. I'll look online and see. Uh, but I, in my opinion, they're gonna be similar to Best Buy PCs. They'll make compromises. Usually where they make the most compromises is on either the PSU, like power supply is gonna be trash. It's gonna be like a no-name, off-brand, not 80 plus rated. That's how it usually is on cheaper gaming PCs from companies like Walmart or Best Buy. And then also RAM is probably gonna be skimped out on. You might have eight gigs of RAM, but these are gonna be bare sticks. I mean, they're gonna give you the cheapest stuff they can, right, to increase their margins. Makes you ask if I smell good. And the answer to that is, let's see. Yeah, I smell pretty good. So, I'm, I'm impressed with myself right now. 10.42 p.m., just trucking along. I don't smell bad. Rodimus, what do you think is the best headset for under $100? Uh, I really like the HS70s from Corsair. I really like, um, eesh, other gaming headsets. It's really tough. The one, I mean, I use, this uh, Razer Kraken, not a Kraken, what's it called? Uh, Razer, I forget the name of it. It's this one here, whichever one this one is. It might be the Kraken, actually I think it is a Kraken. The Razer Kraken headset, which I think is a little overpriced, that's the one Lisa uses. Uh, I have a Void Pro, don't buy that. I have an HS70, consider that one, uh, or an HS50 or 60 if you want a wired one. Um, and I have a Sennheiser, X58, I think it's 58 something. I have that one as well. And that one is good, but there's no mic. So take that for what you want. UEG vi Virus XO, whatever kind of name that is. He's got a virus in it. That's, I guess it's kind of a cool name. Thank you for the $2 super chat. When will AI automation uproot the workforce? Dude, it's already up. I mean, it's uproot. I don't know what you mean by that, but we have, we have, 
automation already taking place in a lot of uh, the manufacturing sectors of uh, developing and developed countries. I, I was actually in an automation club, if you will, in school. So I know a little bit about this, um, but a lot of things are already automated. Like automation is just about making things simpler. It's about improving tasks, right? So like, I remember I wrote a paper for, for one of these uh, people I had to impress for something with, with ISA. And I wrote it on the automatic gearbox. And I said, look, there are downsides clearly from a you know biased perspective, people like shifting, like the feeling of manual shifts in a car. They like being able to control it, just more direct feedback, right, from a manual transmission. Um, it feels sportier, whatever. You can argue however you want, but straight up, automatic gearboxes today are so good at what they do, especially the dual clutch transmissions. Um, they just, they shift super quick, faster than any human can shift. Uh, and because of that, you can accelerate quicker. Um, you don't, I mean, just from a regular automatic transmission perspective, it's, it's, it's pretty much peace of mind. I mean, it, you just drive. You don't have to worry about manually shifting, using your left foot on a clutch, right? Especially a car that has a really heavy clutch. Um, in any race car nowadays that wants to be the fastest it can be is gonna use an automatic transmission. It is because it's, it's just a quicker, easier thing to do, unless you have a use case scenario where manually shifting is beneficial. Um, quicker shifts are almost always gonna happen with automatic gearboxes. And that was an example that I used with ISA to just say, hey, you know, here's automation at work. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of already happening. I don't know what else you mean by that. Uh, Pat Adolfo, have you ever considered adapting old film lenses on your mirrorless? I've thought about it, but I, I just, I don't, I'm not comfortable enough with that yet, just to be frank. Um, I like experimenting with lenses, but I just don't know enough yet about color grading, about getting like the lighting correct in a shot to, to want to just dive right on into like vintage lens filming with mirrorless. I just don't think that it's worth it for me for what I do yet. Uh, Velociraptor King, can you do more Craigslist videos? Yes, sir. I definitely can. Uh, they'll be coming up soon. Let's see. Okay, so Stable Entropy asks, is it bad to use the manual part of an automatic transmission like paddle shifters instead of letting the car decide? Uh, that's a good question. Depends really on the gearbox. Some cars, it's not, it's not as good as letting the computer decide when to shift. It's bad from a fuel economy perspective usually because if you're manually shifting, you're going to let your revs run a little higher than an automatic gearbox would, uh, which in an, in an effect of that is trying to save on fuel. Um, but I, I think the long-term effects of it, yeah, it's going to be a little worse on the transmission because you are forcefully telling it when to shift, especially when you're, when you're gunning it, right, and you're letting those revs run high, and it's kind of waiting for you, right, to unlock the clutch, let the clutch grab again, and just unlock the clutch, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, for that clutch to grab right when you're just just revving that engine, that's tough on it. Um, it's tough on any gearbox, uh, but when you tell it when to do that, it's gonna typically result in just a bit more wear than when the computer decides to shift instead. Anyway, we're getting kind of too far into cars here. Uh, would you rather have the, <laughs> I'm gonna say worst PC and have 5K but can't build a PC Wait, what? Do King Ammo, you gotta like, <laughs> you gotta fix some of those words, dude. I don't know what you're saying in that thing. <laughs> What's up, Kryptonic? Uh, he was Ubering, just saw the notification. What's going on, my dude? I hope you're not Ubering and watching. That would be dangerous. Uh, we saw a couple super chats. I wanna go back here. Mr. KF Gaming, $5 super chat, my dude. Greg, what do you expect from this rumored eight core 16 thread Intel chip? Do you think it will be soldered? If soldered, how would it affect your opinion? Good question. Um, I think it would definitely help my opinion of Intel CPUs if they soldered, like AMD does. Ryzen CPUs are soldered, in case you're wondering. Uh, it's not easy to delid those, as far as I know. I'm pretty sure Summit Ridge was soldered. I think that the second round is as well. Uh, but AMD, or excuse me, but Intel is not. They use this really trashy thermal interface. Um, and the, the IHS just kind of sits on that, right? But there's, it's not going to be as efficient as if you actually soldered it to the die, which is a delicate process, mind you, because you don't want to ruin the die during the soldering process. 
uh, which is why people use like liquid metal and stuff when they delit CPUs. Uh, but I think, yeah, it would help my opinion of it. I just don't think that... I, I, I don't know. It depends on what Intel prices that 8-core chip at. If they price it at 450 they're done for. I think that I would only recommend the 2700X because it just doesn't make much sense to me to buy an 8-core consumer-grade CPU, which we've had from Intel, right, but not consumer-grade. We've had extreme versions of this, 6900X, 5820K, or not 5820, the 5960X. Those were 8-core extreme editions. We know what you can get, right? But from a price to performance perspective, I think that the 2700X or the 2700 is going to have a much better foot to uh, to jump off of because it's already so much cheaper than Intel's newest. So if Intel priced the 8-core at around what the 6-core already is priced at in the 300, 350-ish dollar range, I think they're they're just sticking it to, in, to, to AMD. If they do that, that's great. I don't think they will, though. Intel's Intel. They think their product's superior and they're going to charge more for it no matter what. So don't count on it. Okay, uh, Dare. Dare, thank you for the $1 super chat. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Virus donated another $4 through the super chat. I should have said robots. Thanks for your thoughts. Oh, robots. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. So you're talking about like robots taking over jobs. I actually, we walked into a McDonald's a couple weeks ago and they had like these machines where you can just order off of those instead of a cashier. And I'm wondering, I'm thinking in the back of my head, I'm like, I wonder if these machines actually took people's jobs. Like, literally, like, they fired employees so that they could put these machines in place. I just, I wondered if that actually had anything to do with it. Uh, or if they're keeping their jobs, they're just kind of, like, dealing with the orders and not taking them. You know, they're just fulfilling them. So, I don't know. Okay, a couple more questions. My voice is absolutely trashed right now. We've been going at this for a solid hour. Thanks to those who are still watching. You guys are awesome. Uh, can you do a video about tech support scammers? That would be pretty funny. Like we could bait one. I don't know though. I, I just, I think that's too, it's just not worth my time, frankly. If you guys want a good lol or two, there are some that are already on YouTube, but I just don't think that it's worth it trying to trap one of these guys. They're all over the place. Uh, okay. Scrolling down. Will you be making more gaming videos with the wifey? I'm sure, Stephanie, we will be. Uh, she, we might do something like in, um, I don't know. It's hard to do like a 1v1 in PUBG unless you just want to jump out of a map and find guns and just kill each other. Uh, but I, I want to do more 1v1 stuff with her. It's just really fun to, to get competitive because she's the same way. She's as if not more competitive than I am when it comes to these games. And... And it's because I mean she did it like that was that was something she did professionally so she she definitely has that spirit and I like that because I like it I'm like that too um, but we gotta find games to do that with so if you guys have recommendations for games like that like we used to play games together like Portal we played Portal a lot together um, and that was just because you know, it was like a puzzle solving game right so we had to work together and sometimes it was frustrating sometimes I got mad at her and I was like do this do this and then just you know I'm, she's mad at me because I'm mad at her or vice versa it's it's, I don't know, you guys probably wouldn't be into that kind of stuff, but we could do stuff like that on her Twitch channel. Okay, one more question. One more question. Christian Torres, I literally answered that question about the MacBook Pro. I have a video on that, like, from maybe three or four weeks ago, maybe sooner than that. Just scroll down the videos, you'll see that that answered in detail. What's up, Trucker Bomb? Hashtag dead battery club. You, you don't have a dead battery. You have a battery that's half full. And if you continue sponsoring us, you're going to have a battery that's even more full. Trust me, it'll be worth it. If you stick around for two more months, you're going to have a full-on green battery, and it's going to look dope, okay? It will. It just will. You'll see. You'll see. Uh, Mr. Hip Hop, what happened to Salazar Studios? Dude, that's like, that was way back, man. I had I had a video on Salazar Studios name change from like a year ago, or whenever that happened. But anyway, yeah. Uh, Science Studio went to Salazar Studio. Then went back to Science Studio. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like what Brian did, right? Tech Yes City, then Tech City, and then Tech Yes City. And we all had those weird phases. But uh, I I don't know. I think Science Studio is better in the long run. Uh, Louise asks, why, do you, why did you avoid my question about TechSmith's price increase? Uh, Louise, I'm not avoiding your question. There's so many questions here. I can't answer every single one of them. I don't even know what Camtasia soft software is, so even if I did not ignore your question, I don't know how to answer your question. I don't know what that software is. 
uh, Mr. KF Gaming, hype for that full battery. See, that's the point, right? I know that's like kind of me suckering you into like paying me more money, which is ultimately going to be like three fifty a month because YouTube takes whatever they take, 40% or what have you. Um, <laughs> you guys are just, you want to get that green battery. And like the, the one you guys have now, like the brown one, it shouldn't look brown. It should actually look orange. But the orange one just wasn't showing up very well. And it looked very similar to the yellow one. So I made it a darker orange. Um, so that way you could see prominently the two bars. And then the next one's going to be yellow. So you have three bars there. And then the green battery is going to be all four bars fully charged if you're a sponsor for four months. So. Okay, one more question. Give me the good stuff. Give me the good stuff. Are you going to play Battlefield 5? Probably not. I'm more of a COD guy. I would probably play Call of Duty before I played Battlefield. I, don't, I didn't like Battlefield 1. I really didn't like it very much. Uh, Battlefield 4 was cool, though. Uh, stable Entropy, if you are a sponsor, there's a sponsor button right below here. should be over there. Some Over there, maybe. It's, what, it's somewhere underneath the video screen. If you sponsor us, it's like three, it, it's like five bucks a month. We take like 350 of that because YouTube takes a cut. You get special badges and perks in live chats and comment sections. Your badges still show up. Your badge increases, right? You change badges as the longer that you're a sponsor. So that's why I have the battery thing. So you have a really small battery that's like no charge. And then the second month you sponsor us, you get a slightly higher charged battery, which is what tr uh, Trucker Bomb has and Mr. KF Gaming have. And then uh, after you sponsor for four months, you get a full on green battery. So that's like one way of showing your seniority and that you've supported us financially, monetarily, however you want to look at it on the channel um, by having those, yeah, by having that little logo there next to you. We also need to come up with like special emojis. So we, you guys who are already sponsoring need to like shoot me some ideas via email or whatever uh, and send me some ideas for cool emojis that you guys get to use exclusively, exclusively as sponsors kind of like yeah it's basically like twitch subs basically thanks for saying that little graphics i guess i could have just said that to begin with all right one more one more thing here we go uh greg what do you use to capture game footage and what bit rate do you use so to capture game footage i use uh it's it's i have a an avra media card in here but i don't actually use it for anything to capture game footage usually i use shadow play uh, just because i'm used to using shadow play i think it's pretty low key low profile I don't use it when I benchmark, just so you know. I benchmark separately, and then I go back, and then I shadow play a separate benchmark if you see a benchmark run or something like that. Uh, so you have, yeah, you have that, and uh, that's something that I just use for games. Like right now what I'm doing is I'm just using Streamlabs, and the bit rate that I stream at is 4,000 kilobits per second, which is... Pretty good. 4,000 4, KB is, is decent for 1080p. But I'm using a 1080p 30 webcam, like this C920 Logitech that everyone uses, it seems like. So, uh, Michael XF asks, why do you keep saying last question and continue on doing questions? Michael, if it bothers you that much, you can just leave. I'm so sorry. Um, we have, let's see here. Please answer my question. Abhishek Hajari. I totally butchered that. Can you make a video of cooling a processor with a thermoelectric chip? Uh, maybe, uh, I guess if I want to have fun one day, maybe we'll get around to that. That would be interesting and weird. <laughs> one question, do you have YouTube Premium? No, I don't have YouTube Premium. Uh, no, I, I don't. Um, let's see, Kryptonic's giving me crap for using Avermedia. Media. I was honestly too cheap to buy the Elgato. I don't have an Elgato connection. But Brian does. So Brian was like, oh, dude, I'll hook you up. Because, like, you know, it'd be a good way to introduce you guys. And you can review it and do whatever. Uh, but I just, I just like, ah, screw it. I'll just buy an Avermedia card. Um, I don't use Avermedia software, by the way. I just kind of use it as, like, a pass-through capture card. But, yeah, I probably should have gone with Elgato. Just because it's more common. The support is a little better, I think. Now that I know it. Anyway, folks, we're going to wrap this one up. And if you decide to uh, stick around. I know it's late on a Sunday night. You guys probably have work in the morning or if, you, if you're not in school. Well, you're probably not in school if you have no summer glasses. Uh, but if you want to hang out a little longer, we have a surprise for you guys. Lisa and I, I think Lisa's going to play. I don't know if she's actually going to play, but I'll play uh, to say the least. Uh, we'll be playing some PUBG after this. We're going to pub it up. If you guys are not already in the Discord server, it is free to join. We don't charge for that, although you do get ranked. Like If you're just a regular join member you have a certain like 
access criteria. If you're a Patreon supporter or a YouTube sponsor, you get access to like private chats and stuff, like private little, what am I, what am I looking for here? Uh, just not servers, but channels. I guess that's what I should say, a channel, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just something to give them a little extra, uh, more of a personal connection to the channel. I should be more involved in that for sure. They always give me crap for not being here all the time, but I'm a busy guy, what can I say? So stick around for that. We're gonna have the Twitch live stream uh, airing very soon. I will be sure to post it on Twitter. If you guys wanna follow us on Twitter, it'll be a good way to catch up on the news. For now, this is After Hours number 15. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.